Hi everyone, my name is Thomas. I'm a German living and working in the Philippines. Um, I run uh, a business called Coffee Culture Roastery in Bacolod City, Negros Occidental. So I'm a, I'm a roaster, I'm a coffee buyer, I'm one of the people that tries to help the farmers to improve quality and to get better coffee. And next to me is my friend Teddy. Hello, good morning everyone. I'm Teddy, a friend of Thomas. Uh, I am actually a coffee farmer. At the same time, I'm a, a member of the board of director of our organization called uh, Mini and Morsha Marginal Coffee Growers Association uh, here in Barangay Mini and Morsha. So I, I know Thomas uh, several years ago <laughs> when we started. When, when my hair wasn't gray, yeah. <laughs> Teddy is one of the farmers that I work with uh, when it comes to improving quality, um, promoting coffee from Negros, uh, just like the Philippines, um, the island of Negros. I, I would say probably 95% or even more of coffee that is being grown uh, in Negros is uh, Robusta. But we also have a few other varieties and that's also the beauty of the farm that, that Teddy owns. He has a little bit of Excelsa and he has a little bit of Baraco, which makes it very interesting for me to play with different uh, coffee varieties and to explore the potential for it. The other reason why I like to work with Teddy is I, I'd like to be very transparent in the way I, I source coffee, the way I um, market the coffee, the story that I want to tell about the coffee. Teddy has been a very uh, interested farmer in in changing things. Uh, growing coffee essentially or traditionally in Negros is just you know waiting for the fruits to ripe and then uh, farmers will come and, and pick it all at once. They strip harvest the red cherries and the green and the um, yellow ones so it's just a hodgepodge of uh, cherries subsequently uh, different qualities. At the same time, most the farmers grow and, and uh, process coffees by drying it on the roadside, sometimes directly on the soil. So this coffee, uh, which is usually called native coffee, really doesn't show the true potential of coffee. And uh, as a slow food advocate, uh, we want to have clean, safe and fair coffee. So safe means it should be free from contaminants. Uh, there should be no toxins in it. There should be not something in it that is not coffee. Um, it should be safe to consume. It should be enjoyable to consume. And what is, I think, really important is the prices should be fair for everyone. For Teddy as a farmer and for me as a buyer, of course, uh, because I need to sell. I need to sell the product uh, at the end of the day and I really think that um, with the help of Teddy um, I was able to show that the true nature of, of coffee coming from Negros. Some people say it's just robusta so it's just bitter um, but it's only like that because the quality has been really bad and people add tons of sugar and milk to it to make it enjoyable. But good coffee doesn't really need that. You can only evaluate coffee when it's pure. Coffee is a fruit. So if it's ripe, it has a certain amount, a certain amount of sugars, which uh, we like as roasters because we can actually work with this. We can caramelize it and we can make it into a really nice, sweet, um, beautiful product. And um, I don't know, how, how was your experience uh, there? Because I, I came in here and bugging you, <laughs> doing all this kind of stuff and not knowing where we are headed. Yeah, engaging with you guys, uh, with Sir, uh, Sir Thomas, it's actually a very uh, uh, turning point for us co as coffee farmer here in, in Morsha. Because Morsha, in this area, uh, within Mount Tonlanatsu Natural Park, is really a, a lot of coffee trees here. Uh, years, years ago, uh, it was an experience of the farmers here that we practice traditional uh, harvesting method of uh, getting coffee food. No? Also, when it comes to pricing, it, it, it depends what the buyers in Bacolod offers uh, of the farmers' food. And uh, after you arrive here and uh, 
uh, starting with our partnership, uh, telling us the best thing to do with our coffee, giving us inputs, the technical inputs from the maintenance of coffee up to the harvesting, the processing, up to the, the sorting of coffee. It was really a, uh, a very important to us. Uh, we learned a lot from you guys. Also, that I, I hope that this, this, this personal experience of mine, I can also share with, uh, with other farmers, the members of our organization. Uh, traditional practice of coffee harvesting and processing versus this uh, new introduced for you uh, is, has really uh, a big difference in terms of quality of coffee and of course the pricing. I think it's, it's of course it's a matter of fairness but if you don't generate enough income through your economic activities in this case coffee farming how will you save up money to reinvest how will you expand maybe your your production um, if if farmers get disillusioned uh, and it's not worth their while there might not be enough reason to grow coffee which is exactly what I what I also yeah. need uh, of course I could I could bring in coffee from from elsewhere but I mean I'm I'm grounded here I'm based here um, and and Negros has um, and Negros Coffee has so much potential that I think they they ascribe to it, and it, I think people should develop that much more um, because our product can easily compete with definitely other robustas in in the Philippines and and also coming from Vietnam or Indonesia. So um, I think it's it's something that that gives identity to a product, to a place, and to the people, and maybe also purpose. I, I started talking coffee just because my mother's before, when I grew up, uh, I used to, uh, 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the morning, I smell the, the native coffee, uh, the aroma of native coffee that, that would uh, uh, arouse us and uh, uh, make us uh, alive. Uh, <laughs> That's not my idea before. My, my, my mother, it was the legacy of my mother, and uh, I have I have this parcel of land. Uh, what 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 do I do this? Uh, I have to plant coffee. And then this this guy arrives and, and Teddy uh, telling me, Teddy, you have to you have, you have to start. I think uh, talking about coffee. <laughs> but before that, I have planted already coconut trees. I have rambutan here. I have plantonis here. One day, this this. A small parcel of land become congested of land. It's easy to to cut the uh, unproductive one. Mm. Uh, that that's just my principle before. Uh, then it was all of the sudden that Tom, okay, there's a money in coffee, and, and, <laughs> and I prove to that. I know. Now right now I can and tell anybody that there's there's um, there's money in coffee. We will see where it, where it takes us, but I think we are off to a, to a very solid start. I think, um, as far as I'm concerned, with, with Teddy's product, I was able to generate interest in, in coffee from Negros, which is not the standard native coffee, but an elevated uh, product. And um, our product is called Negros Blend, so it's a blend of uh, Teddy's Robusta and, and uh, some Arabica in it. But people love it. Uh, we, we, we can make more money on coffee if we do right thing on coffee coffee. That's, that's, that's uh, my advocacy right now. But I am telling to them, our ultimate goal is to produce, all our produce become the grade 1 coffee that we can sell to... Uh, to you, you increase the, coffee, the portion of, of quality. There will always yes. be... Uh, out of every harvest, they will always be under grade, they will uh -uh. be lower grade, uh -oh. which is fine. But if, as long as you're, you know and you very consciously work towards improving the quality segment of your harvest, so you can just make more income. So we are at the foothills of uh, Mount Canlaon. So this is a quite slopey area, um, unlike the, you know, the plains that are usually grown to sugarcane. So we can, we can call this an agroforestry system essentially so we have multi-story crops i think you have some gabi you have batuan uh -oh. you have uh you have tall fruit trees you have ipil ipil um so i think it's also a very good way of 
of protecting the soil. In as much as coffee culture, the business that I, I set up wants to bridge uh, the producers with the consumers and tells the story and uh, the culture of coffee. I think, I think slow food in its various aspects and um, products and coffee is one of it equally can tell that kind of story and we need people uh, like you and your organization uh, that that becomes part of it and, and subsequently educate also the younger generation uh, to follow a more healthy, fair, um, clean lifestyle. Hi, I'm Thomas from Coffee Culture Roastery in Bacolod, Negros, Philippines. Hi, I'm Teddy Cagnetti. I am a coffee farmer. I am proud to be a part of Terra Madre 2020. I'm proud to be a part of Terra Madre 2020. Our food, our planet, our future.